Welcome back to the Hot Rod Pod, where it all began. Brian Loans, lead broadcaster for the NHRA. John McGann, the editor-in-chief of Hot Rod Magazine. We are joined today by Troy Ladd, one of the most influential, forward-looking, and well-known hot rod builders in America. Owner of Hollywood Hot Rods, he's built several amber-winning cars, America's Most Beautiful Roadster. Um, We talked to him about... Firing customers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Taking criticism from... Uh, the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Rivets. Right. And uh, actually coming from a background where he, he uh, basically is kind of self-taught. Yes. Uh, enthusiast, was in a totally different line of business, starts his own company out of a passion, um, and it's turned into a, a really successful business for himself. He's talented. He's influential. He is unfiltered. Troy Ladd of Hot Rod Hollywood starts right now. Hey, everybody, welcome to this episode of the Hot Rod Pod, where it all began. Brian Loans, the lead broadcaster for the NHRA. John McGann, the editor-in-chief of Hot Rod Magazine. And Troy Ladd, the founder, the brains, the driving force behind Hollywood Hot Rods. Yeah, thank you. Pretty awesome. I like that intro. That's a great intro. How about that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. You didn't even practice that or anything. I didn't even tell him what to say. (laughs) No. It just just came out. It's my gift. It's my gift. I love that. He does people's answering machines (laughs) like voicemail. (laughs) Listen, there's a lot of aftermarket (laughs) companies, and I'm telling you to press one. It's awesome. (laughs) You sound like like the movie phone guy. Do you remember that from the 80s? Welcome to movie phone. It is why why I have the career that I have. (laughs) The movie phone guy has no idea the influence he has brought upon me. Uh, He is like your influence in the world of of high rod building. He was my influence. Influence at home wow. yelling into a, a hairbrush. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, thank you for um, thank you for coming out here to do this. We are at day three of the Hot Rod Power Tour West 2023. We're at the drag strip, uh, the historic drag strip, and now it is In and Out Burger Pomona drag strip. And um, just really cool to catch up with this particular guy on this episode. Yeah, Troy was the actually if you if there were a pilot to this thing, it was uh, Troy and Chip. And oh, uh, that's right, right. that we goes did back that. to the thing yeah, we that did. Was neat. But beginning of this year in our photo studio right after the Grand National Road But show. obviously that couldn't be a very good show because we didn't have the voice well, that's of right. this oh, gentleman exactly. here. So well, the, the that, focus probably, that one got pitched. The focus group <laughs> you know? said that the intro was weak. And yeah. so the, when the focus group said that, here I am. Yeah, we, had, yeah. we had Chip and me and Bill Gadol, but yeah. not the voice. So, it <laughs> so well, what we what we figured out quickly, right, was like the, when we divided you guys up and got an hour out of each of you guys, it was actually even better. Yeah, uh, that's, so an that's, hour? I got to be here an hour? Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's contractually <laughs> obligated. Somebody get them a contract. Yeah, and that door's locked, too. <laughs> okay. so. But no, man, um, and again, it's, it's great to have you in here because we've talked to great builders. We've talked to Bill. We've talked to the Ring Brothers. And I think that's been a really fun theme of these first kind of 12 episodes mm-hmm. we've made of the show mm-hmm. is getting really not just inside the, the thought process and the craftsmanship, but inside, like, the backstories of how mm-hmm. you created these mm-hmm. these brands and names for yourselves. And, um, you know, the, the tagline of the show is where it all began. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the things I think people just land on constantly about you is like, well, you had a business plan when you started <laughs> yeah. your business. Really? That's a thing that people say. Huh? Right. Well, it's, it's you, true. It's right. true. But it, but it yeah. gets the brakes beaten off of it. And to me, the more interesting angle is how that business plan actually helped sustain you through the last 20 years, which has been like this economically and everything else. Worthless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> worthless. Uh, the, I think the business plan was just something to convince myself to do it. Yeah. And then once I did it, I realized that it was nothing like the business plan and it was a stupid idea. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, starting a business is, is just dumb. Right. <laughs> you know? And I look back and like, uh, I, I, again, what seemed like a good idea at the time when I look back knowing what I know now is like, oh my God, you didn't have any money. You didn't even, I didn't have a building. I didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm, but I'm going to do this. So, I mean, I guess the, I think the takeaway for, from all of this is the reason there was a business plan is because this was my hobby. Yeah. This mm-hmm. was my passion. This mm-hmm. was my love. So in order for me to, to step to quit my day job, yep. I needed like something to help my brain. So I don't want people to think like, Oh, he's some corporate dude or something. No, no it was just passion hobby that I, I turned into a business. Look, how similar is that to Tom Nelson's story? Oh, yeah. You know, our episode Mm -hmm. with Tom Nelson, you guys both come out of construction. He was a construction guy, right? And and it really, it Mm kind of mirror image. Mm -hmm. It's neat uh, because Tony Thacker was telling me, you you weren't, you you, you started this Hollywood Hot Rods on your own, but you were were doing something completely different before that. Yeah, I was a project manager for construction. Um, But but the interesting uh, key to that is project management is managing manpower, money, and material. And that's what building oh, cars sure. is, manpower, money, material. So it's, it's kind of similar. Yeah. Um, and I feel like from a business point of view, 
I had a little bit of an advantage because at least I could understand how businesses work. Yeah. Where most people that build hot rides, they come from the the, the trade in the, the yeah. hand yeah. hand workmanship in. Yeah. So you have talent, and then you build cars. I'm like, well, I build cars so good, I'm going to have a business but yeah. then you don't know how to run a business yeah. you know how to build cars and all of a sudden there's too many people and maybe there's too much overhead with the space mm-hmm. you have like you you've, you've kind of yeah. you were able to cancel some of those variables out. yeah so it's it's tough and um yeah i mean that's kind of the the long and, and short of it but like you said over the 20 years it's hard it's still hard it's yeah. still hard i mm-hmm. mean you know sometimes we're just coming up short <laughs> you know mm-hmm. um it's just kind of the the way business works cash flow management is always tough yeah. and um yeah so i don't know it's it's I, I can't believe that I was so stupid to quit a real good job <laughs> to do this. <laughs> but now is like I've have I've lived an ex, ex, experience yeah. like r- r- sitting here with you guys and I'm going to go race that track down there yeah. right after this is done. And this is just amazing dream stuff that yeah. I, I get to do. And mm-hmm. so I've I'm never taken it for granted. I've never taken it for granted that um, I'm living – I'm living a dream. And I always, when, a lot of times when we talk about this, I call it the American dream because what is yeah. the American dream? You want to do what you love mm-hmm. and make a living at it. And mm-hmm. that's what I do. Yeah, and, and you deliver a product to people who also are getting something that they've dreamed of having, right? Yeah. I mean, and ultimately, that's the, the neat full circle. And that is not only just the, the thing that you've always wanted to do or had wanted to do to move into, but the end product is is handing somebody this thing that, that they have wanted, whether they conceived it in their own head or whether it's something you guys conceived that they wanted to own their whole lives. And, and that's so fulfilling too. And uh, you know, one of the reasons I got into car building in the first place, because I was poor, grew up poor and I was given a 66 Mustang. And so if you don't have any money mm-hmm. and your car breaks, what do you do? You got to learn how to fix it. Mm-hmm. So I got into it out of necessity because I didn't have money. So what's kind of cool about, you know, doing this for a living with, with customers and yeah. their dreams is I can create things for them that I still can't afford to, right. you know, to create <laughs> right. for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's really fun is just because it's that for, for me, it's the, it's the thrill of the challenge and the, and the build. Yeah. I think I've, I've noticed that ab- about me a, a lot is like, uh, once my car is done, it's not like, Hey, I'm going to go drive my car. It's like, what's the next one? I need mm-hmm. a new one. I need mm-hmm. to build a new one. Mm-hmm. So, and I just kind of realized that about me. Some people like the, tr- the drive. Some mm-hmm. people like the build. I'm kind of more on the on the build end, I think. Mm-hmm. So, um, you talked about the the, the, the the 31 Ford that we covered in Hot Rod. <laughs> yeah, um, and that that was a neat thing. I, um, it's here. Yeah, I saw <laughs> yeah. it down there. <laughs> well, I was trying to find you in the yeah. audience, but uh, or in the crowd. Um, but Tony Thacker did those articles, and he was mm-hmm. telling me how quickly you work. Now that that was a car that you built on the weekends. Like mm-hmm. basically, you have like a day off. Sure. The so. Week. Yeah, in your in your magazine, you guys called it the one day hot rod, right? And not because I built it in a day, but right. it's because uh, I have Mondays off. Mm-hmm. So uh, I mean, I have the weekends off. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, Sunday, I have to do home stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So Monday is my clear day. So um, that was the one day I had to work on it. Mm-hmm. So I believe it took twenty two Mondays. I think we figured. Something like and that. You, you said he started <laughs> with a still, frame and a body. That's and still a, exceptionally fast. Yeah, 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 it did start with with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. It was just a. It was a. It was a, a, a naked frame, yeah. just rails. I had to build the you know the suspension, the chassis, and all that. The body was already chopped. That was the only thing in my advantage. Mm-hmm. And the engine, I built. I built the engine as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was pretty, pretty fast. Well, and I would <laughs> talk to Tony on the phone as he was telling me about the different installments, and it's like. He, he had to be there, like you know, how how quickly you work yeah, too. This is like, happening. Yeah. Done. So, <laughs> is that part of the construction and the project management thing, or is that just kind of like are you high? No, energy, that's just like? that's just the passion yeah. side of it. And quite honestly, that that car, along with a couple others that I did at home during like COVID and stuff, gave me an, a, rev, a revitalized passion. To I was going to ask you about that. Like, mm. how important is it to exercise that muscle yeah, for yourself? It, 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 it was that was huge. That car was so huge for me um, mm. because the, you know, the high end cars and the show cars and all that stuff, the light at the end of the tunnel is so far mm. and, like, and you, you get, you get bogged down in, in it's like, you know, you know it's hard to explain, but like plotting progress. Yeah. yeah. It's like, Oh wow. We just spent a week making a bracket. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hooray, you know, woohoo. So, uh, and, and, and I don't work in the shop as much as I used to either. Like, it gets, I'm like paperwork and ordering parts and design and stuff or whatever. So it started to bog 
down my brain. Sure. And so that car is like, screw it. I'll just, I can just build this. I can, it doesn't have to have paint. It doesn't right. have to be nice. It right. doesn't have to be anything. Right. So, um, and I, I'm so happy with it, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's rough. <laughs> it's a rough little car. I, I loved seeing it though at the Roadster show. You get, it was oh. parked like right by Bill Ganahl. Uh, that, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, just for, I don't know, maybe in my older age, I've, since we've, in my career, I've accomplished, you know, like the Solana current and yeah. Amber mm-hmm. and all those things. At some point you start to not have to try so hard yeah. like I don't care so I thought it was fun mm-hmm. to in the Grand National Roadster show in the middle of where all the America's most beautiful roadster cars were mm-hmm. exhibited mm-hmm. to put my rusty ass you know <laughs> right. Model A right in the middle here's the palate cleanser <laughs> yeah. 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 so um, and it got more attention than like because in our booth we had some finished cars and we had that one and that one got more attention so it's, mm-hmm. it's just fun just to I don't know. It's, it's been so good for me. And it was great that you you guys covered it, too, because that wasn't something that I, I'm so thankful that you did that. Because at first I was like, this is my thing. I want to be left alone. Yeah. It's my Monday to yeah. be alone. Yeah. And then I got yeah. Tony to deal with. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I hope Tony watches it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure he does. <laughs> but um, but then in the end, it was so neat to, 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 to um, chronicle mm-hmm. that little car. So I know it's fun. And I still haven't met my goals. I have g- certain goals mm-hmm. to meet with it. I um, get fr- getting the front tires off the ground was goal number one. Nice. I did, mm-hmm. I did mm-hmm. that. Nice. Mm-hmm. So I met that goal, and I need something in the tens. Okay. okay. So we'll see. Maybe that's today. Yeah, that could be today. <laughs> yeah. Nice air, nice, uh, nice tight racetrack yeah. out there. Yeah. But you know, I think in terms of building this car for you and, and the coverage that it got, I think for us, and if you're in this industry and and you guys go way back and have known each other a long time, but you know, I, I, how important is it to you to have people understand like kind of who this guy is, like as much as you can write the it, words in the magazine, but when, when his work gets displayed in that natural way, it's like, see, this is the guy. I think it's incredibly important. And I guess what I like too, is it, it sort of that palate cleansing effect mm. that you mentioned, like, uh, I was at the Roadster Show a few years ago and you had a car I was on display and I just overheard people in the audience and there's always, you know, the armchair quarterbacks <laughs> about, you know, yeah. he was complaining about rivets Oh yeah, and, and the styling yeah. effect that rivets, you know, it's like a fad and he was yeah. blah, blah, blah about rivets. And I was like, I kind of looked at the car. And like, but um, you doing that for yourself and it's, it was just pure driving. It's just, this is just a car. This is what I want. It doesn't need to be fancy. I don't have to adorn it. And mm-hmm. uh, so it's like that kind of, I think, shuts down some of that. And not that I don't think you, you know, you're, you're used to criticism and, and hearing not all really. that stuff. Not really. This is the first I've heard of it. <laughs> okay. Well, Wait, uh, someone doesn't like something I've done. I feel it. I need to go back right, home. Well, do you need a minute? <laughs> go back to bed. <laughs> do you need a yeah. minute? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it shows that you, you're, you're versatile. You don't follow a playbook. Like, I like that. And, and that, that was kind of neat about that, too, because it was like, if anybody had any preconceived notions yeah. like oh million dollar cars exactly blah, 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 yeah. all that stuff is yeah. like oh yeah really this is right i, I do i do this too yeah. <laughs> you know yep. this is right. this is where i started is garage building and that's the other thing we're talking about like again back to the american sure. dream and stuff sure. is like i don't know to me people shouldn't criticize me for like oh he's done this or he's done that my point is you can do that sure. yep. i started that's with right. nothing right nothing and this was just a hobby so I always try to spin that on people. Like, don't be like, like uh, jealous or criticized. Like you can do yeah, it. Yeah, Here's the like, roadmap. Yeah, I've actually laid go. it out. These, these are the steps. You, you too can be a lunatic. Yeah, and follow and these ruin steps. your life. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's funny. Cause I've, I've, I have heard like, Oh, uh, like people mix st- when, when you're successful, people make stuff up yeah. sometimes. Like, yeah, sure. Oh, oh he, sure. had, he had family money or he had money. Like I had nothing. I had nothing. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, uh, but over the years it's just whatever. And, yeah. and now that I'm getting old and stuff, I really don't care. You know, when you get old, you don't even remember. <laughs> but it's like, but, the, but it's that early point where guys, somebody, no matter what profession you're in or angle of this industry you're in, there are young, there are younger guys that that get swallowed up by the stuff you just talked about, right? If you if you mm-hmm. let that that if you let that outside noise mm-hmm. permeate too mm-hmm. deeply into what you're doing, you mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you end up you basically end up hating all of this and running away from it. That's interesting. So uh, I I um. I came up with this term for like other other people in like the hot rod industry that kind of started shops and talk a lot. Of shit. 
Yeah. You know, and I call them sad sacks. And a sad sack there you go. is somebody that's so focused on what everyone yeah. else is doing that they don't see that they could be just as successful if they focused on themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so many people like that, like, this guy's got that, and that guy's got that. And like, you know what? If you took that energy and yeah. just pushed forward and did your own thing, you'd yeah. be like that guy. And that's, that's something that's interesting. Well, and, and to that end, especially starting the shop when you did 20-some years ago, or 21 years ago now, yeah, right? Yeah, it was 2002. Yeah, so yeah. 21 years ago. That was before social media came up. So the criticism mm. you'd get would be letters to the editor of Hot Rod <laughs> yeah. or, you know, some yeah. random dude yeah. scribing something in shop. And then all of a sudden it's like 2008, 2009 hit, and now it's some dude in Sheboygan. It's just going to yeah. burn you to the I ground. I know, right? It's weird. Yeah. But I, I yeah. tried not to look at yeah. social media. It's, it's the healthy That's another thing. Got. That's another thing that consumes you. I've seen so many people like that starting new shops and, and, and new business. And – you can see that they're posting on social media all throughout the day. Like, shouldn't you be working? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. right? You have a business to run. <laughs> yeah, focus on that. I mean, there, mm-hmm. there's, there's definitely uh, a use for social media, and there's, yeah. a, there's a tool. It can be used as a tool, but I think people m- put too much yeah. emphasis on it, and you need to focus on the running product. your business, the product. Yeah. yeah. How did you physically start Hollywood Hot Rods? Did you, like, just start building – uh, cars for customers or did you like find the building like you said with the business Oof. plan um so i had done the the, the business plan mm-hmm. and then so i had it kind of figured out and then i had thrown sent that to a couple of banks or something like an sba loan yeah. and they all laughed um and, and then what was the reason just i mean is it a risk you really want to know <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you. sure yeah white non-veteran male no experience those were those were the things. Okay. Like if you could yeah. if you could meet one of those other categories. Yes, yeah. you've you've done this before. No, you hadn't done this yeah. before. Yeah. Demographically, yeah. just not not okay. working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's you know, unpolitically correct as that sounds. That's the the truth about sure. how the SBA works. So, uh, long story short, my my friend worked at a bank, and then she or my neighbor, and she gave the business plan to their guy, and he says, oh, it, he was the new loan guy. So he's oh, like, wow. oh, we'll we'll do it. And so <laughs> that's cool. You know, I got um. I got, this is the part that I was laughing at earlier when I think, what an idiot. I got 35 grand. 35,000 bucks, that's it. Yeah. 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 Damn. Yeah. To start the shop. Yeah. And I, that seemed like a lot of money at the time. Sure. And I, I, I had wiped out my own savings and, and everything too and some like 401k, but that got me another 15. So I started, <laughs> well, there with, you go. I started with 50 a, grand. A cool, a cool 50 grand. <laughs> yeah, cool yeah. 50 grand. <laughs> so that's how that went down. And once that happened, I'm like, oh crap, I got to actually do this thing yeah. and so uh one one day uh my girlfriend took was taking me to ikea and i hate ikea i just hate it and i was so angry and i was having a temper tantrum in the car like i don't want to go to stupid ikea and as we pull off the freeway in burbank uh-huh. there was a building off the five freeway that said for lease yeah and i'm like hey let's go look at that so found it uh leased it and just started there with no, i've never had a shop i mean i had a little um a little playground shop before yeah. mm-hmm. I shared a shop with Chris Shelton. Oh, wow. Um, oh, cool. For many years yeah. as well. Like okay. he and I, that just was our little hobby shop. That's cool. Um, okay. And ironically, all he could afford was the Ikea furniture. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it still haunts you. So, oh, I, I went on a crazy shopping spree at Harbor Freight though. Oh, there so you that go. Was yeah. When you, yeah. when you open up the business, because that was my next question yeah. is how do you furnish it? You need, you need tools, you need toolboxes. I did. I literally did go on a shopping spree at, at Harbor Freight. I had a bunch of, I had some tools myself as well, mm-hmm. but sure. it was that, that's why I was saying earlier, like when I look back, like, oh, that's just, it was wrong. Everything was yeah. wrong. You know? The old two down to quit analogy, yeah. right? Was it you and some other person or when did you bring in, when did you start bringing just, in employees? Just me. And then I did have... Usually one other person. My brother came to help for a while for the first year, um, and then I just I got some. Um, you know, Brian, I don't know if you know Ryan Rivers. Mm, um, yeah, he he, uh, he worked for um, um, Barry White, and now he works for Matranga. You know, mm-hmm. Matranga collection. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, he was one of my first employees, mm-hmm. and so it was just tough. It was usually just me and a guy or a couple guys, and then it kind of built up. But even to to this date. Um, I've never really have more than six yeah. 
That's six a good employees. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that with some other people, too. which is where most of the people we've talked to have landed on. Mm-hmm. Some of the guys it? said that number six has come up multiple times. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and I, th- I think it was Bill Ganahl who said at first it was like way too many, and he kind of has pa- had pared it back, and that was like where he wanted to be at. Oh, like right wow, it's mm-hmm. kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. That's cool information because you know, because one of the things I've always talked about is you know, people, oh, do you want to grow your business? Like, no, I do not. I do not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You know, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want. Yeah. You know, more overhead, more space, more yeah. is just more headache. Yeah. And then at some point, we I call it keeping the art pure. Yeah. Like, I, then we'll have to do tune-ups and repairs. I don't want to do that. We just want to do the cool well, art yeah, stuff. God rest know? his soul, but you end up with Boycottington's operation, right? And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, you get this, like, manufacturing wing, and it's just, like, it spirals mm-hmm. out of control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I just that just hasn't been for me. I mean, I bought the buildings I'm in now, so that... That helps. Yeah. Going to help for my future, and you got to do have to think about your future at some yeah. point and exit strategies. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. You know, and this podcast will make me so famous. I'll well, probably yeah. yeah. You're you're about to ride a rocket. <laughs> yeah. Time. So that'll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, side tangent story here, and I hope you remember uh-huh. this. So 2008. The main issue of Hot Rod Magazine, and the title story was called Road Thrash. We went on this road trip. You were on it. You had this dude, it was like, um, it was a tea bucket, it had an inline six in it, uh, Wayne, crossflow head, you had done some work, kind of spruced the thing up. Ross Lee. Ron Lee. Ron Lee. Mm-hmm. It was Ron Lee's car. It was a 32. 32, yeah. And so it had a T55, yeah. so he was really cool. Uh-huh. And so Marlon Davis was out on this trip. <laughs> and so there were seven different cars. There was a, like a Bonestock a GTO Judge. There was a Cisitalia came out of a guy's collection. A what? Uh, a Cisitalia. It's like this Italian road racing style car. It had a Lincoln V8 in it. Oh, it was wow. awesome. Yeah. Um, there, was, there was the car you had. There was a couple of um, Steve Wait, Strobe cars. I drove, I drove the, the car you're talking about with the Lincoln in it. Yes, um, the little well, red one. Yep. Yeah, but you were in the passenger seat with Marlon Davis, mm. <laughs> and Marlon was driving the T bucket or the, uh, was driving the hot rod, and I was in the GTO behind him, and Marlon was screaming at the top of his lungs, "It's getting away from me! It's getting away from me!" <laughs> and I just remember this: you guys pulled over, and you assumed you assumed control of the automobile. But I'll never, I'll never forget it because I thought to myself, "Oh, that poor bastard up there! I don't know what's going on up there, but it's not good." Oh wow, well, that's funny. I, yeah. don't, I don't remember, but I, oh yeah, They're, those cars aren't. Um, Aren't always what you think they are when you yeah. when you drive them. I <laughs> I did a I did a road and track took a took a thirty okay. one of our thirty twos out and he literally a little bias ply tires he slid all the way through the intersection at a stop sign and he's like. <laughs> Oh, these don't stop as good as new cars. Like, no, they don't. No, they don't. I just remember, I remember riding with you, and it was like, it was the first time I'd ever really been on a highway and anything like that. And it was like, I think it had a transverse spring in the front, the mm-hmm. little narrow mm-hmm. tires. And the only thing I thought about was like, everything is bigger than this oh, car. Yeah. Everything yeah. is yeah. bigger. Yeah. And these guys are wailing past us. And, yeah. they, and yeah. I'm like, it's a, you, you really kind of understand your own mortality on the highway in a, in a true traditional car like that. Yeah, so yeah, open car like that too. You're looking, you're looking under trucks and things <laughs> on the freeway. Yeah. And, yeah. No, it, was, it was really neat. But yeah, you guys had taken that thing in and kind of, I think it was it had sat a long time. You guys kind of spruced it. Yeah, that was a neat car because yeah, a, a straight six of the Wayne Crossflow head is, yeah. is pretty unusual in a 32. But that good is, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we like we like weird and unusual. <laughs> weird is, a weird is yeah, good. <laughs> totally. When we look at the variety of the work that most notably your, your shop has put out, like it, it does have a very wide range in terms of like mm-hmm. you've done some you've done some muscle car era stuff or like partnerships with different companies, and of course the more more traditional and the, the beautiful uh, cars of like you know thirties forties era stuff. But talk about that range because there are some guys that are just too they're too. Good, right? It's too good for them to work with a company mm-hmm. on something that's outside of what the norm is, and that's never been you. No, um, I I believe that um, our style transcends through even the the early and the later stuff. I always talk about, and um, one of my my talking points when we about when we do things like this is there are probably thousands of shops in the United States that can build shiny cars, mm-hmm. but there's only a handful. You can probably count on two hands that have a specific style that you can identify. Mm-hmm. You know, Foose and Ring Brothers and Trepanier and I Believe Us. Um, you can kind of go, oh, that looks like a Hollywood Hot Rods. That looks like a Trepanier. So that, as an artist, is the goal. Like, just putting together a shiny car, anybody can do. So that's the goal. So I do believe that that even when we do a different type of car, you, our, our style still kind of goes through. Because the um, I did Power Tour... 2008, oh, probably 15, 14 or 15. And I took a new Mustang and we actually did a, a new Mustang for Ford. Um, and 
something that we would totally not do. Never touched a new car. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that, that even that car represented what we do because it was, um, it was a convertible that we had built a, a lift-off, handmade aluminum top. Oh, wow. Yep, and it, it had, like, rivets, and, and it was very industrial with mesh and things. And so even that's, like, totally something unique for us. Um, it, I, think it, I, I, think, I think, anyway, that our style can still even go through. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, and we just finished a 60, um, 65 Mustang convertible, which is a little different for us, too. And uh, uh, our style is kind of subtle elegance. We, yeah. I use the word subtle elegance sometimes. So that car, we don't change it and make it crazy and modify it uh, over the top. But we do so much sheet metal changes on the car that you don't see. Mm -hmm. That we want to, um, we want to promote the DNA of the car, not change it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So that's kind of like some of what we do, and we always talk about, um, you know, form and function too, as well. Like um, when we do cars with e with the rivets or, or or brackets or whatever, all that stuff has to have a purpose. So even the car that you're talking about, that. The, the one that he was complaining about also won everything. So, <laughs> uh, whatever you can. <laughs> no. That's exactly. No, no. Um, but but part of that car was I am aware of the fact that if you put a bunch of crap on a car, right. it, it's doesn't make it better. So right. that particular car, if you notice, every place there's a polished sheet metal like riveted panel is because it's, it has a race car theme. Mm -hmm. So anywhere there's a wear area where latches are where the suspension goes there's a riveted panel to protect the paint a polished stainless yep. so if you take a concept like that and you you go completely through the car top to bottom mm. and stick to a plan um that makes uh for a co we call it like a cohesive a cohesive design yeah. and so just anyway. to, just to put a point on mm. that like you can almost go back to that guy complaining about the rivets right. because He's looking at it thinking that they're simply there aesthetically. Right, right, right. right. So he doesn't, that guy's not made the leap yet to yeah. understand that it's there for functionality as well. Yeah, and I, I talked to um, uh, Dean uh, from Hot Rise by Dean. Uh, he, I don't, you know, he's out of Arizona. Mm -hmm. And he, he was asking, he's looking at it, he's like, Do you think you went too far? Yeah. <laughs> he asked me. And I looked at him and I said, No, I don't, because everything that is there has an actual functional purpose. Mm -hmm. And then I said, do you think I went too far? He's like, no, I saw that it had a function. Well, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he was just you know, pu pushing my creative sure. brain to see. So, yeah. While you're building something, are you doing that in your own head? Like, am I going too far? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and there's always the, the logic pattern like, oh, like this area needs something. Mm -hmm. But what is it? Mm -hmm. I can't just put like on the on the back of that car, uh, the hinge area, like we're at, at the top, uh, kind of the the um, sail panel and the in the deck lid. It needed s something like oh, we'll make exposed hinges mm -hmm. that are stainless with pu with um, quick release pins because mm -hmm. it's a race car, so everything has mm -hmm. quick release pins. Mm -hmm. and, like that is a functional item if it was a race car because you could pull off your your sure. deck lid. Yeah. But we can make it cool and shiny so that it, it adds a detail. So there, there, there is that process. Yeah. Um, so it's basically like editing, right? It's like a, a good writer or an author, like uh, editing something, oh, yeah. and, and you want to use all the words. Right, but right. You're, I mean, over the course of time, how much has that evolved for you? You know, when you look at some of the earlier stuff, has it maintained a level or is there not the things you regret, but uh, the things that you're doing now, when you look back, you think, okay, like at that time in my, in my development, I see things differently than I did then. I, I do, but a, a lot of that is more, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's been quite a bit of evolution yeah. over the 20 years. And a lot of that is also the fact that we have customers that will let us do more stuff mm -hmm. now. Like in the beginning, even still sometimes, we lose so much money um, by overdoing stuff on people's projects. And in the beginning, to me, it wasn't a. It was a good, not a bad de decision to lose money, but it was a good decision because it. Uh, if if I built stuff and not charge them for it, it gets it out there and people could see. Oh, they built this cool mm -hmm. thing. So it was more important in the beginning. And it, like I said, we still do it a little bit to really present what we want the world to see. Mm -hmm. Even if maybe the customer is like, oh, I didn't really want to pay you that much. Like it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the, the the big evolution is we're able to do things that I. We're, we're not able to do before 
like that that 32 that we we're talking about that's called the uh, the gaunt coupe by the way if you yes. google it, it's the gaunt coupe oh, yeah. uh, brown 32 roadster yeah. um that i was able to do anything i could possibly want on that car and yeah. so that was one of the very few cars that we've built where when it was done like i left nothing on the table there's n- there's no more that could happen here um wow. so that was pretty that was pretty cool and the customer is the one that allowed that because he's just he's he had no um um direction or opinions on he's like you do what you want to do even down to the paint color wow. he's like you choose what you want to do we <laughs> talked about that a little bit yeah. in our photo studio discussion and i thought that was neat that like what's the what's the thought process and what's that interaction with the the customer generally and and you said that was the only person who has allowed you to do that but is that good is that bad do you it's good in okay. that case it was good and our our biggest car that we've ever built um is the mohan speedster mm-hmm. um that one's even better because the the customer pushed us further oh wow oh really yeah pushes he 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 like uh, we're, you know, I work with Eric Black to do the the original design, mm-hmm. and then we would go through and like oh change this and change that. But as we're building it, the customer is like, hmm, could you make the roof disappear into the trunk automatically with the push of a button? Like what? Just <laughs> go ahead and say that again. It's slower this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thirty six <laughs> Packard ish thing, and you want what to happen? <laughs> you know. And then when he when he does says that, then like well. From my point of view, it can't have anything modern showing. I can't see actuators right, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how do we make that happen and make it look? And so that was where he was. He would push. I'm like, Woof, wow, that's, and that was cool. We, I mean, we accomplished that too. It has a whole hideaway automatic roof. Oh yeah, and then once once we built it, I built it on brackets, and the roof kind of folded in like that, and then the lid closed. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, what if it flipped upside down? And then when it flips over the package tray could finish out the Roadster so it looks like a perfect Roadster. Oh, wow. With the top open Jeez. or that gone, wow. hidden. Yeah. And yeah. then when it's up, it looks like a coupe. I'm like, oh, wow. And that worked. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I mean, I'm yeah. just trying to wrap my head around that. You as, a, as the, the, the working with a designer or, mm-hmm. you know, is this even possible? Like, do you tell yourself that there's absolutely no way this can happen? Or you're just like, let me think about it? No. <laughs> I, th- those are fun challenges because... <laughs> Yeah, and, and, you know, um, and Eric wasn't even involved on that part. It was just Bruce, the owner. He's like, this is what I want. And mm-hmm. Eric drew the, the top and everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that was wild. And, it, you know, you would laugh at the engineering that we would do mm-hmm. on that. Like, one of the engineering things, again, this is, I, I like to tell people that think that, oh, fancy hot rod shops. It's, no, we're just garage dudes <laughs> doing stuff, yeah, right? right? Trying to figure so, like, it out. The, the roof. The roof, I, I stuck, uh, took the fender off, and we made a one, uh, one foot bar to that would rotate the, or sorry, not the roof, the deck lid. Okay. The deck lid, because it's a huge deck lid, and then put uh, a piece of wood on a bath, or a piece of wood with a a, a jack on a bathroom scale, <laughs> and then you jack it until it lifts the the roof, yeah. and then that's, that's how, how many much. foot, foot, yeah, pounds. pounds. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, yeah. it takes to. To, to lift the roof. So then I take that and I want a three inch arm. So divide that by four um, for three inches or Jeez, sorry, multiply, okay. multiply, multiply. Yeah. So if, if it was a hundred, now we're at 400 mm-hmm. um, on three inches, but divide by two. Mm-hmm. So now you're 200 and now I need a 200 um, foot pound solenoid or, um, or actuator, actuator or whatever. Yeah. 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 And like, wow. it's like full hillbilly engineering, you know, <laughs> but, but it works. Well, it works and it's beautiful and it's jaw dropping. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and then how do you resist the temptation or is this not even a temptation to go, okay, well that works. I mean, that's mm-hmm. one of those things I think that it impresses me about guys like you that never fall into these traps. But if it's me, I'm like, I'm putting this on everything I built from here. <laughs> right. 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 All right. Right. Every door, every yeah. hood. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you avoid falling into those traps? Or is that just not your personality? Like you don't want to go down those roads. Yeah, again. I don't really want to. You know. <laughs> People must call and ask for it. No? No, nobody's okay. asked for a, a prototype hand-built, coach-built 36 <laughs> well, Packard with a hideaway roof. But the, the way people look at stuff, though, right? well, you know, but even just that roof, it, you know, we, we've heard from other guys yeah. who said they built a kind of a signature car and the next phone call is, I want that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, I, I, I have had people ask a, a bit, but um, no, nah, I think yeah. it's a little, I mean, I think if we're like building bunches of Camaros or something, yeah. that may be yeah. more likely. Yeah. 
But um, because it's it's I mean it's yeah. I mean bespoke effectively. Yeah, I mean uh, you know we do lots of thirty you know thirty twos, which is nothing like a thirty six. And thirty six Ford is different than a Packard, and there's a, there are, there are a little bit of a r- variety there. So I mean it's I love that yeah. that problem solving stuff. It you would know? be a really interesting challenge, especially like you know this far into your career, just like having done so many different things. Like what else can I take on? Well, yeah, now now, now we have a, um, another next level version of this we're doing a little speedster with a, um for the the same customer bruce uh with an offenhauser mm-hmm. engine and like um, and the whole car folds into a briefcase <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what happens at the end it's like the, bi- the bimoto the little <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Case motorcycle <laughs> so that they'll be a lot of challenges man we're talking about maybe not doing a frame doing like a doing like a bulkhead type system who knows there's a lot oh, really? of a I- ideas style deal kind of okay kind of yeah and there, there's like some discussion about Stainless and aluminum, like f- and shaping stainless is mm. it's tough. So we'll we'll see, we'll see. How do you plan the build? And that, that sounds like a multi-year project. And then how do you keep money, like the income coming in? Do you have like you s- you'd have to sort of actively in your head schedule different it's jobs tough. to cash flow is tough because yeah. because one of the things that I made it a policy of, which is a bad policy for me <laughs> but good for customers, is I. Only take money for work complete. Wow. So, because yeah. every person that's ever had a car built has a story how they gave some guy a deposit right. and their money goes away and you know that sure. whole thing. So I always tell people how it works. I, I I bill the first of the month for work done last month. You can look at it, you can agree and and whatever, and then you pay me. Um, so doing it in that manner is hard because yeah. I still got to do payroll. Yeah. Um. So it's challenging. I guess is the only. The short answer is I don't really have a, a secret. It's just it's a little bit of a struggle, but I got to stay stay on top of it. Yeah. But everybody that we work with n- never have any problems collecting. There's there's never. I, I even have some customers that'll come and look at their car and like, have you done my bill yet? Like, no, I haven't yet. He's like, well, here's twenty grand anyway, just like to get wow. ahead. So yeah. some guys like to stay ahead. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. Th- I, I I maybe the better answer is it's challenging, but it's easier with good customers. Have you ever had to fire a customer? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. 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 <laughs> Packed all this stuff up, pushed it to the corner, you know, cooked Said, it to the property line. Get it out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it has to. It's in nature of any business. Any any business, you're going to have the, what is it? They say there's 1% of people that will never be satisfied. But I can only imagine um, in this process, oh, it, must, yeah. it's, it must come to a point where it's just like, this ain't going to work. Yeah, he was a crazy person. It was literally crazy. And, you know, red flags are when you got insurance adjusters coming in. He's trying to get a free paint job. And this is a, like, this is like a, a Model A body out of a barn. And he's, like, calling insurance adjusters. And, yeah, it got scratched. So I needed a, a free paint job. And the insurance guys are like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, he was crazy. And, and, um, and luckily I got out. And he would call. I'm like, hey, I'm like, you can't even call here. Like, you can't, we're, we don't talk. I don't think you quite understand. And um, we got out okay with him. And then uh, a month later, I got a call from another shop. Like, hey, there's this crazy guy we're doing work for, and he's, he's suing us. Oh, wow. Yeah, would you, wow. Wow. would you speak on, you know, on our behalf? I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't want to stir. Yeah, you're going to be in this entanglement yeah, for the rest right. of your first yeah, life. Like, no. Yeah, no. So, I, you know, I politely said no. Yeah. And a month later, another shop for called God. and was getting sued by this guy. So, yeah, I made the good. It was a good call. <laughs> Professional lawsuit Ponzi scheme car builder guy. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> How much conversation is there between the the shops that we mentioned before? Like whether it's you and Troy, um, how much conversation happens in that in that group? And I, I want to say the cool guys club, but, <laughs> but to some degree, did I make the cut? Yeah, no, no you didn't. Awesome. You, it's, that's what's why you're here. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I I'm interested in that because because obviously the work that that shops at your level and and this level of of craftsmen do is different. Yeah. Right. And so you must be able to talk about things if you do on a different level. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, people have asked me before, like, oh, so who's your main competitor? And do you talk to other shops? Because like, like, no, there's no competitors. I don't yeah. think we do yeah. all different things. We do our own thing. We have our own customer base. But guys like that, you know, I really I really respect like Trepanier. I mean, he you know, he's my friend and we, we talk yeah. and he, he just he does spaceship level stuff. You know, sometimes, which is cool. Um, you know, I, I thought when we brought the Packard out, that was a spaceship. Like, we always yeah. talk about it at our shop. Let's, 
how do you build a spaceship? We want to bring a spaceship to the car show, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, I think Trapani does that. Um, really good friends with Strope. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just a good guy. He's a character. Oh, he's just, a character. Just, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. such a guy good... Guy needs a haircut, to be honest. <laughs> guy needs a freaking oh. haircut. I love you, Steve, but well, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. We got we to gotta do it. We gotta, we, maybe we got to sneak up behind him with a pair of clippers. I don't know, but it's got to happen. <laughs> so, so he's, he's one of my favorite people. Um, you know, Shapouris when, uh, when he was alive. And uh, f for me, um, a lot of those guys... It was like, like more, especially like Shapours or, or, or um, Brizio. Oh. Brizio, he's kind of like my mentor. He was always the guy that I looked up to in this industry because I always wanted to be like him because he's an example of good guys can finish first. Nobody has anything bad to say about right. him, mm -hmm. and you never hear drama around Brizio. So I wanted to be that guy. You know, I want, I want that. Um, when I do pictures, I smile. Don't do the tough guy pose. You know, there's all, yeah. all of this... But, um, yeah. <laughs> but so all of those guys are, um, it's neat to, to, to be friends yeah. and it, and it's really cool to share, um, like secrets and not secrets, but, but like things we've accomplished yeah, sure. and, you know, Trepanier will go like, come here, come here, look at this, look at this. You know, his car will be at, at a car show, like, come on in here. <laughs> and we're all proud of, um, you know, challenges that we've, that we've solved. Mm -hmm. And I think that's healthy and it's neat. Um, it's, you know. it's, and it's you each, nobody, I think it's self-confidence. All, all of you have d developed careers and reputations and work and, and canons of work that allow you to be confident in who you are so you can have these conversations mm -hmm. and these friendships without having them become frenemy, yeah. rivalry, right. weirdness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, and there are bad people in our industry, too. You don't say. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, just for yeah. me, I just just don't yeah. talk to those people, you know, and... Mm. Um, it's it's interesting, but I mean the, the 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 reality is is our whole industry is passion driven. Whether it be um, a builder or just an enthusiast or yeah. or magazine guys yeah. or yeah. or or whatever you do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's one hundred percent right. Undefined. Um, please don't make me answer it. Please. But I think that. <laughs> <laughs> that passion binds us all together yeah, in totally. one way or another, yeah, you know, totally. and, and there should never be any, any, any weirdness between anybody because we're all in it for the same reason. So, um, and it's certainly not making big money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But but we get to do what we like to we do. We get to live. There, yeah. there's that's. Um, I always talk about quality of life. There's more value in quality of life of being able mm -hmm. to create and do what you love than just money. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can pay your rent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think uh, culturally and, and hot riding in the aftermarket will never get tired of the shapes of? Model right. A's. That's a good, that's a good question. Well, why will yeah. we never get tired of the shapes? Because we see them every day. I mean, we get pounded in, into them, but yeah. yet you stop and look at every one of them. Yeah. So why? I I would say because that's where it all began. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? I like that. See what yes. I did there? <laughs> <laughs> You should have saved that for the last year. I know. Damn it. <laughs> but, but, but really, uh, like, that yeah. is where it all started. And everything yeah. else has sprung from that, that, that era of hot rodding. You know, whether it be drag racing or land speed of the, what, that would have like, 40s. Yeah. 40s. And then um, post-war and all that, it just kind of never, never stopped. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that everyone keeps looking at those cars because that's well, the yeah, beginning. but it's but it's <clears throat> even transcendent. Like I got two teenage sons, and it's like they are way more apt to stop and look at a coupe or look at a, something with beautiful, you know, compound curves from mm -hmm. the '40s. They'll walk past a lot of muscle cars. That really mm -hmm. doesn't that doesn't really me click them in the same way. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> no. but it's like to me, it's like if you grab if this thing still grabs the attention, a, a car that was built a hundred years before this kid was born, yeah. he'll stop and look at it versus something that you know that we see. In the muscle car era, it's just weird. There's, it's it's almost like something intrinsic. Well, maybe at, maybe at this at this stage of the world, those are pretty weird looking cars. Yeah, that's true. Too. You know, I mean, I mean, try to try to reverse your brain into being 15 years old yeah. or something, mm -hmm. and all you know is cell phones and internet and, well, there you and, go. and yeah. Teslas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you mm -hmm. see that, like, that's a pretty wacky looking thing if you think about it. Maybe I'm just yeah. just a theory. No, it's a good know? point. There are certain shapes too. I think it, we all recognize it like the thirty-two Ford, like a sixty-nine Charger, sixty-seven Mustang. Just like the shape is so good that uh, I think they just do transcend time. 
Yeah, those iconic shapes mm -hmm. just. I mean, so, I guess they're iconic for a reason, right? So maybe they, they're they're still yeah. they're still garnering that yeah. attention. Yeah. Yeah, and and do you ever do you ever look at the the stuff that you have produced and, and are producing and kind of wonder how it will age? Do you ever do you ever think of things and not that you would ever build something to, mm. and how? Oh, I wonder what people will think of this in twenty years. But do you ever consider like how certain things will be perceived in a decade, I do. fifteen years? I do, I do, and I I I believe that a lot of what we do tries to be timeless. We try. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you know, back in the in the 80s when you had heartbeat stripe, pink yeah. and fuchsia, oh God, yeah. you yep. know, yep. billet wheels or yeah. not even billet then. Right. But like that stuff did not age well. New. But if you stick to traditional styles, I think traditional styles yeah. mm -hmm. um, transcend time. And and that's what we always talk about, too, is we build traditional styled cars, not necessarily traditional cars. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. You would mentioned that before. Yeah. Respect tradition. Respect tradition, but, but not bound by it. Because mm -hmm. if you built strictly traditional cars, you can just open up one of the little magazines and then copy it. But w we like some creative mm -hmm. yeah. outlet. So we try to create something that's visually traditional in style, but not necessarily the same as anything that's ever been done, if that makes sense. And we use European style quite a bit, too, in, in American hot rods. Yeah. So that works as well. I've wondered too about like uh, 3D printing and some of this new technology that is available to um, builders that I'd seen at like the Riddler or uh, even the Rocha show and some of the Sloniker cars. Um, I talked to Scott Sullivan at the show yeah. earlier <laughs> <laughs> this year and he's, he wasn't critical of the use of like 3D printing, but it's just the human intervention that needs to happen to make it not look like a robot just spit out some part. And, I mean, you're not you're not building that kind of you're not using those kind of parts, but you. No, I'm. I mean, I I appreciate any technology as a as a tool. Yeah. But we're we're not there. I mean, we 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 can be, but like uh, all of the 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 pieces to the that that 32 are all um, hand hand welded, hand yeah. ground, hand. So it, we we make we. We can make things look like they've been cast. We can make yeah. things look like other things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I, I think I talked to Scott Sullen about that too, is like, you can just draw a bunch of stuff and cut out a bunch of parts and then throw it all over your car. Right. Does that make it better? Right. Not necessarily. Right. Um, can it? Sure. Depends on how you use it. Mm -hmm. So I think like, just like anything, there's, no matter what technologies you use, there's still a human artistic factor yeah. that needs to make the the car nice yeah. or artistic yeah. or, or creative yeah so but yeah I, I like that stuff just we you know well, one of the things that we do is um by the time i think people overuse cnc stuff sure because some of the times like if we're making a one-off piece for a car um by the time you draw it you know um, um code it cut it and all that we could have made it sure it would take two weeks for a man sure to, to do that but it, it's going to be about the same price as a computer one. Yeah. So, so I'll opt for the hand art and, over mm. the, over the computer stuff. Um, that's just, just us. Yeah. It just, just depends on. What are the things like, what are some of the hills that you've yet to climb that you'd like to? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> that's tough. It's, it's kind of hard to predict because I don't know what's coming. Right, so so when the phone rings, there there are things that may that are going to come over the other end of the phone in the coming years that are going to go yes, you know, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like oh that'll be cool. That's something that's going to twist my brain up. Yeah. I'm like oh I want to do that because it just twisted my brain up. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, yeah. I need to solve it. So and I, I would imagine we have a project coming up. There will be a lot of that. Okay. So I'm kind of excited uh, about that. So that's you know that's on the side of just pushing my brain yeah. further. So um, that what it is, I don't know till it comes. But has your customer demographically, the person calling your shop to have a car made, changed over the years, or is it is it the same guy? But he just he's but he's the same guy. But he was tw twenty years younger when you first opened the business. But it's the same guy that was calling you twenty years ago. Uh, I I have a hard time identifying a specific demographic okay. i do i mean we we have a lot of uh, a lot of variety sure and you know and you know the 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 the, the big show car yeah right he, that's a, a certain type of right, guy that's, <laughs> yeah right. that's a guy with yeah, that's a, guy a with lot of money wallet yeah, yeah, yeah that's a guy exactly. with a lot of money yeah 
but you know, like here, um, 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 Simon, um, Simon Gluckman, he has a little 32 um, coupe mm-hmm. that we put together for him, and he drives the living crap out of it. And he's going to race it, and it's been all over the internet and all over everywhere. And it just is just a good looking hot rod. Now, is that some million dollar show car? Heck no. It is a driver, and I'm I'm happy to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. You know, and at, especially at this point in my career, it's like. That car has got more action. There's more. He's doing more <laughs> stuff with that car yeah. than most any of our show cars. So th- there's a place for that. And I got a, another Model A that we're doing with a 409. I always wanted to put a 409. Oh, oh cool. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I always wanted to do that. And so I got a guy that talked into it. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, he wanted a car like mine. And he's like, what should the engine be? And then we just kind of came up to 409. So, <laughs> so that'll be fun. Uh, super crazy show car? Nope. Nope. Just a cool car with a 409. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, do, do a lot of your customers want show cars? Do they want a Riddler or a um, no Amber car? No, not not really. Um, uh, sometimes, like the Amber cars, they evolve into it, which is a bad thing. We talked about to that. happen. Yeah. You know, they, they're so happy with the way their car is going. Like, we're going to put this in Amber. Like, Oof, that's we should have planned for that, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. move the decimal point. Yeah, <laughs> you right, know? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. commas shifting <laughs> decimal yeah. points. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So. Um, like the, the, the Mohan was always intended to, to make a big splash and yeah. it did the, um, the little coupe that was intended yeah. to do something and it did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, those are, there's only been a few that really have been focused on winning uh, a show. Cause I, I try to tell those guys, don't, don't get caught up in all that. Like you got to enjoy car. The worst thing you can do is for uh, have a build, a b- whole build process. And one of the things that I promote is I promote the build, not the end result. Mm-hmm. Like, because y- this should be fun. Like, whatever your job is, when you come to visit me and look at your car, may- we might have lunch. We're going to talk about cars. We're not going to talk about the build. We're not going to yeah. talk about that stuff. Yeah. We're going to, you're going to enjoy this time away from your life. Yeah. That's what I think that that should be. So, so we, we go through this process. Mm-hmm. And then the worst thing you can do is for the, enjoy this entire build process. And then the very end, <laughs> he puts it in a show <laughs> and it loses. And you just ruined yeah. the entire journey, the yeah. entire. Yeah. And like, I, I try to talk guys down from there. Like, you're going to be sad. Right. We, you just, we just finished your car that you've been dreaming of. Yeah. And you're going to be sad because some judges didn't, yeah. you know. So that's, that's one of the battles. Like, we've done multiple Amber cars where I'll, I'll tell the guys, too. Like, if you will only expect a jacket and a good parking spot, you can put it in. You're a winner already, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. don't get caught up. Don't yeah. get caught up in it. Because then they get, people get sad for, at the very end of their, of their journey, which is not cool. How, how important is it to you to, like, when the car you were just talking about that's here racing, that's, a, that's not the, the gazillion dollar show car, like, how important is you to, to let people know, like, this is what this car is going to drive like? Do you get a lot of customers who, like, don't quite understand <laughs> what they're maybe getting themselves into? Or, or, and is that important for you? Because, you know, we talked to the Ring Brothers, and they talked about how they first started building these cars, and it's like, is it going to run for 20 miles? And right, now, they've, you right. know, they're really more a dynamic kind of pro touring style. But when someone calls up and says, I want this, do they really know what they want? They many times don't, yeah. you know, and like we try to tell me you can't expect a 32 to r- drive like a Mercedes, you know, they're it's not supposed to, man. No, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. The, the back to that, that road and track deal that we did, he, when he, when he asked how much the, the car cost, you know, to build, he's like, so it costs that and there's no power steering and there's no you know there's no air conditioning i'm like dude there's no windows <laughs> there's no windows you don't, you you don't get it yeah. yeah he's like yeah you don't get it the same for you pal and he's all, it, but it, he's like it costs that much money and it rides like like yeah i said think of it think of it like this it's like a classic um expensive um vintage motorcycle like it's gonna ride like crap it's gonna leak it's gonna ride like yep. crap it's gonna but be it's hard cool. as hell to start so that's that's mm-hmm. hot rodding you mm-hmm. know so i'd Good luck. I have a. I, I can't seem to get that across to my to my fiance either. She's she's not, she's just not there. <laughs> yeah. She, she, she when I take this, she's like, you're gonna you're gonna ride that that stinky, rusty, <laughs> weird looking car. He's like, she's like, I think I could see the the, the ground through the floor. Like you can, <laughs> you know, you can. absolutely. She's, can. Yeah. yeah. And she's you're gonna put that. Race track? That's that's just stupid. Like, no, you can stay home. <laughs> right. yeah, she's, yeah. she's like, oh, I'm not. She's never even ridden it. She's she's only seen it from afar. I drove it home. Uh-huh. She's like, oh, really? <laughs> this is where you went on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, 
And you put that in the backyard, like the neighbors are going to see. <laughs> but that being said, she's, she's, yeah. she likes cars, too. Um, yeah, she yeah. does. Just not that one. Just not that one. No. She drives a 57 uh, Corvette that I... Nice. Like a barn find kind of 57 Corvette with a uh, LS3 and Kill T56. It. But my probably second fastest car we own. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fast. Anyway. But yeah, so she's, she's uh, um, into it to a... To a, a point. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I always thought that's kind of interesting when, you, when you're when you basically handing to somebody a kind of a time capsule. Like, mm-hmm. you're getting in this thing, and you're going to have a really authentic experience. If, if you know, this mm-hmm. car has so much DNA in it from 50, 60 years ago, that's what it's going to feel like to drive. Not necessarily, you know, like you said, you're not going to mm-hmm. be able to jump on your ABS brakes three yeah. feet from a stoplight and make the thing do what it should do. I mean, our hot reds really are like motorcycles yeah. with four wheels, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. Well, man, thank you. It's great to have you in here and, and kind of pick your brain on a lot of different stuff. I, I think you, um, you know, you continue to be one of the great kind of thought leaders in, in this whole industry and, and the, the yeah. work that comes out of Hollywood Hot Rods continues to be the stuff that we all want to stare, stare at and kind of break down and analyze. And I think the way you've taken us through a lot of that stuff is, is pretty great. Cool, yeah, thanks. thank you, Troy. And thank you for, uh, Troy, we're here at um, Power Tour West. Mm-hmm. Troy brought a group of uh, traditional yeah, yeah, we were trying to bring hot rods back to yeah, hot rods. So, <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, and you did, you helped me out too with the, you know, the, your build with Tony doing the work. Mm. Um, you know, I've, I've said that before. It's kind of a, a deficiency on my part. I'm more of a muscle car guy. So sure. I take over hot rod and I was like, <laughs> I need some old cars well, in the just, magazine. So. Just, just, just so you know, all of those cars are racing today. That's great. So thank you for that. That's going to be neat. You guys having yeah. a good time then? I haven't raced yet. All right, well. I had to do some podcast leave. or something. Yeah, yeah we yeah, I know. <laughs> <I'm in here. laughs> so, look, they have been drag racing at this facility since 1952. Well, the very first race ever held here was 1952, so we're now, what, 71 years post-fact. He's 21 years in business with Hollywood Hot Rods, and he's uh, an hour behind where he wants to be on the drag strip <laughs> right now. So, Troy, thank you very much, man. It's thank awesome. you so much. Thanks a lot, Troy. Always a pleasure. It's great. That's another episode of the Hot Rod Pod, where it all began. Make sure you give us a review. Give us a great review. Leave comments. Tell us how good he looks. Tell us how dumb I am. Tell us how cool Troy is. Whatever you want to do, just Only say something. Only positive comments. Say something. We'll be back soon with more builders, more thought leaders, and more industry movers and shakers here on the Hot Rod Pod, where it all began.